I'm back for the part 2 of our learning video. The learning video about vegetable gardening. Actually, in the part 1, we already discussed the definition, the types of vegetable gardening, the, the, the plan you should undergo in doing a vegetable gardening, and also we have discussed the cultural practices and different crop management you're going to conduct in your vegetable garden so the last part of the part one is about crop management uh, it's focus on the soil and fertilizer management so in this part two we will continue our discussion so to continue or to add some information about uh, requirements for successful gardening crop management which involves soil and fertilizer management so in fertilizer application you can also conduct different ways you can do it localize as what can you see in the picture or either you can apply fertilizer by a foliar application or by broadcast or by soil incorporation that's the three way of fertilizer application in your vegetable gardening so for example for carrot for the frequency and the time of application so for carrot Incorporate compost and manure to soil before planting. So apply PK and 1 half N in band at planting. Side dress also the remaining N at the initiation of the rooting. So that's the example of frequency and timing of application of our fertilizer. So we have also for Kang Kong and Pechai. For onion. For squash, for tomato, and for yard long bean. For some crops, I prefer also to have some information or brochure or reading material gathered from reliable and viable source like in the Philippines you can do it in the website of the Agricultural Training Institute. and. You can also see the uh, P-Card library of the DOST. There, there are so many crops, crops management practices, production practices that involve also the fertilizer management to the specific crops, which are very accurate, research-based, and scientific. So, let's go for water management. Water is also important for crops because water is essential for the photosynthesis it is also a raw material for food production and also carries food to the crops to the different uh, no, to different parts of the crops so water also cools the vegetables so it keeps them tender crisp and fresh so there are different types of buttering. So for the sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkler type, you, you can spray or you can use rubberized hose with sprinkler. Nozzle creates artificial rain. So you can do it also by irrigation. Buttering can be also done by irrigation. The irrigation can be by surface only or by furrow. So what can you see in the picture so when to water so you can do the watering practices or watering management after sowing the seeds after seeding after pricking after transplanting and every time the soil is dry Remember this, there is the need to water the crops in your garden. So in determining soil moisture content, here are the scientific practice. So 
get a handful of soil from your garden squeeze it fairly hard then open your hand so after that you can check if there is a need to water if soil and no need to water if soil forms a ball with a wet outline. So the amount and frequency of watering. So the root type of crops determines the amount and frequency of watering. So the pechay, cabbage, mustard, and kangkong are considered a shallow rooted crop so the watering you should do it more often however for the deep rooted crops example of it is okra tomato eggplant and pepper it requires less frequent watering so soil types also determines the amount and frequency of watering so the sandy soil with poor water holding capacity needs more often watering since it does not hold much water so for the soil with normal water holding capacity the soil requires moderate watering however for the clay soil it requires less frequent watering because it is good water because the clay soil the clay soil has a good water holding capacity here we go for the another requirements for successful gardening which is the pest management so to make it simple the pests commonly found in our garden are insect pests weeds and the diseases so for the pest management with focus on weeds so weeds considered pest on crops because weeds lower yields of vegetables they also compete with vegetables for light and carbon dioxide and because weeds compete with vegetables for water and soil nutrients so actually there are common weeds here in our garden, here in our locality, so Amaranthus spinosus is one also of the weeds. Cypyrus rotundus, which considers the worst weeds of the world. The Mimosa podica and the Portoloca oleracea. So always remember this that weeds are anything the anything plants that is unwanted on the growing area of your crops so when to weed so remove weed at critical period of crop competition which is 25 to 30 percent of life duration so there are, there is actually different methods of control for weeds so number one hand polling is most effective for small areas so repeated weeding is also necessary to control the weeds and for pr practices here in the locality mulching on beds with dry straws banana leaves sugarcane bagasse and coconut leaves are placed 5 to 8 centimeter thick on top of the soil around the base of the plant so you can also use of the synthetic herbicide but if the weeds can only be controlled by the by the four that we have enumerated earlier do it use only herbicide when you when these four methods of control of weeds cannot suffice the the weeds on your garden so another pest is the diseases 
So, what is the effect of disease on plant? So, like weeds, diseases lower yields of vegetables also and they also reduce quality of vegetables. So, non-parasitic diseases are due to either lack or excess of minerals. We have the unfavorable soil-water relations and environmental factors like air pollution, low or high temperature. Injury for non-parasitic diseases serves also as an entry point of parasitic diseases. So parasitic diseases are caused by fungi, bacteria, virus, nematodes, flowering para and flowering parasitic plants. So the common diseases we found in our garden, if you are planning to garden, please be notified with these common diseases. We have the blossom and rot of tomato. But something it creates a blemishes, a big blemish or uh, yes, major blemish in uh, in in your tomato. We have the dumping off or the you can see the dying of of early stage of seedlings. We have the downy mildew of the cocoa beets. We have the cocoa cucumber mosaic virus. We have the fruit rot in eggplant. We have the orange galls of wing bean and the late blight of tomato. So to control this of the common diseases and the other diseases, here are the general approach in controlling the diseases. So to prevent use of resistant varieties, use of disease free seed stock, you can also undergo seed treatment, crop rotation can also help in reducing or in to lessen the, the damage of diseases. Soil sterilization can also prevent planting in well-prepared fertile fields with an NC control and practices cleanliness in the field. So for the insect pest, so not all insects actually are pests. Some have positive effects on plant like insect produce beneficial materials like honey and silk. They also aid or help in pollination process in plants. However, if the negative effects on plants are caused by the insects, then these insects are considered as pests because it lower, lower the yields and quality of the vegetables and it transmits disease to man and crops. So here are the examples of the destructive pests, insect pests. The beetles, the butterflies and the moth under the Lepidopteran family. We have the flies under the Diptera family. We have the true bugs. We have the aphids, the grasshoppers, thrips, ants, bees, and sometimes wasps. So the method of control for the insect pest are you can prevent it by using of resistant varieties. Through mechanical control, you can do it by cleanliness in your garden, picking insects by hand, use of protective nets, use of light traps, use of parasites. For biological control, you can also use different bioagents to control or to suppress the insect pest. So you can also enter crop, use on enter crop that repels some insect pest like cabbage you can plant you can relay cabbage with tomato or mustard or cabbage with marigold so that there is, the marigold will suppress the pests on the cabbage so you can also use of the botanical insecticides to, to control the, the insect pests in your vegetable garden so here are the example of the bot botanical insecticides that are can be homemade or can be do it you can do it in your home like the magic de cacao 
controls, pant hoppers, cut worms, flies, ticks, fleas, cirrus, cercosporas species, and coleto trichum species. And the modded botanical insecticide can be prepared as follows. You can extract the juice of the leaves and stems and after that, after the extraction, ferment it and you can use now it as a spray. So, Madidi Cacao is one also of the useful botanical insecticide. So, Makabuhay is one also because Makabuhay, uh, uh, Makabuhay fermentation or Makabuhay liquid, uh, fer liquid extracts can control aphids, moth, worms, flies, and some beetles. So, how to prepare? So, pound the roots, stems, and leaves and soak in water to extract the juice and use a spray. Marigold. If you have marigold in your home, it controls nematode, green uh, leaf hoppers, diamond uh, black moth, and storage pest. So, to prepare the extract or the botanical insecticides using marigold, you should pound the flowers, the roots, and leaves. You can then soak it in water overnight and after the day or tomorrow you can now use it as a filter and you can filter it and use as a spray hot pepper hot pepper controls also worms aphid mites and stem borers so the botanical insecticide from hot pepper you can prepare it as follows number one number two Number three and number four. There's the other one, the neem. Because the neem controls beetles, aphids, weevils, stem borers, army worms, nematodes, and the study shows also neem can control mites, the sappers, bacterial wilt of cucumber, and bugs. So in preparation of the neem botanical insecticide. You can do the following steps. Step one. Step 2 Step 3 And now you can use it as a spray So for the harvesting and the post management of crops So you can use also of the use of indicators of maturity So for example For the fruit vegetables Tomato You can harvest it already when green mature or pink or red ripe for the yard long bean, you can harvest the produce when, when there is a well filled pod that snap readily. So for watermelon, the change in color of lower surface from a white to creamy yellow, dull sound is produced when tapped with the back of the hand. For the sweat pepper, when it reaches market, marketable size, you can now ready to harvest. For the root bulb and tuber crops, for garlic, when tops begin to dry and to pull down. For the onion, when tops begin to dry and to pull down also. For carrot, when desired size is attained, you can now harvest the carrot. And for the potato, when tops begin to dry and to pull down. So here is the general criteria when to harvest your crops. So harvest your vegetables when the following had have been achieved. Number one, good quality. Two, desired size and long-term durability. Aside from the use of indicators of maturity in harvesting, you can also use of known maturity days. For example, the crops, for crops, the carrots. You can you can harvest it 60 to 70 days after planting the kangkang, the onion, the pechay, here are their maturity in days, the squash, the tomato, and the yard long beans. So back back for a while for the use of indicators of maturity. So we already discussed the use of indicator maturity for fruit vegetables, for the root bulb and tuber crops. And now, 
we're going to add information on how to use indicators of maturity for flower vegetables. So for cauliflower, you can harvest the cauliflower if there is a compact cord. For the broccoli, compact bad cluster. For the leafy vegetables, let's say for example, when the cereal size is attained. For, for the cabbage, you can harvest it if the cabbage form a compact head. For the kangkong, when the cereal size is attained and for the sweet potato, the upper vine tips with an open leaf buds. So what happens after harvest? So food production and vegetable plant stops. The freshness of vegetables are prolonged when exposed to the cold temperature and high humidity. Foods and water reserves in vegetables are lost through respiration, transpiration, and microbial action. Aside from that, happenings after harvest, in addition, controlling the factors that affect respiration, transpiration, and microbial action prolong freshness of vegetables. So you can do it harvest in the early morning or at night to slow down respiration and transpiration. Handle carefully to minimize injury to the product which serves as entry for microbes and use perforated plastic bags to reduce transpiration. So how to harvest? Here are some of the cultural practices and techniques. Pulling. This is done for mustard, tetchai, celery, carrot, and radish. For cutting, you can do it for cabbage, eggplant, cauliflower, and broccoli. Digging. It is applicable for sweet potato, taro, white potato, onion, and radish. Picking. It is applicable for tomato, peas, pepper, beans, cucumber, and okra. In handling of the produce, so washing is also important. So, how to conduct washing is by wash vegetables to remove dirt which may harbor pathogen. So, in washing, Change water frequently if no running water is available to ensure clean vegetable. So dry root vegetables immediately after washing to prevent unwanted sprouting and for fruit vegetables, wiping is better than washing. Trimming is also one of the handling practices of our produce. So trim off damaged, diseased, and discolored parts at harvest time. Trim parts that can cause injury. For the storage, you can use the refrigeration method by storing clean vegetables in the chiller. For non-refrigeration procedure, if refrigerator is not available, st store vegetables in plain or thick plastic bags with perforations for gas, entrance, and exit. For onions and garlic, you can, you can hang it dry. For the freezing method, may be done on vegetables only such as tomato by using the following steps. Blanch the tomato, then peel the tomato and keep it in a plastic bag then store it in a freezer. For the processing of our produce, so fermenting and pickling preservations are normally done when there is an excess harvest of our produce. So alternatively, place product and 10% salt solution Example, cucumber, cauliflower, onion, garlic, etc. Alternatively, starters which are rich in lactic acid bacteria, such as brine from previously fermented batches, may be used. So, the fermentation process is completed in 6 to 8 weeks. So, if sweet pickle is desired, the salt stock is drained and the vegetable is rinsed and transferred into a solution of sugar saturated 4% vinegar. So for the production of planting materials, how to obtain our planting materials for a vegetable garden, you can buy it from the local nurseries. But first, seek if before buying that the planting materials is of high quality planting materials, adapted varieties, healthy planting materials, and more uniform as in F1 hybrids. So you should also consider get from the neighbors or friends in obtaining the planting materials and produce your own seeds from open pollinated varieties so make it sure 
producing that the stocks or the planting materials are healthy access to seeds and of good quality seeds so the type of planting materials we have the seeds we have two types of seeds with the dry seeds and the wet seeds with mucilaginous coating and which seeds without mucilaginous coating type of planting materials is also cutting so how to obtain cuttings cut 50 to 100 centimeter stems you can use the upper 20 to 30 centimeter terminals for the potato and for the others, trim older leaves from cuttings for better survival. Aside from seeds and cuttings, rhizome and corms are also one of the planting materials. So you can obtain ginger, taro corm, asparagus crown, and the bamboo crown as your planting material. For the bulbs and tubers, bunching onion, multiply your onion bulb. We have the garlic and the potato tuber. So production of planting materials. So suggested guide to produce planting materials for seed. So select best plants from garden plots in terms of growth habit, yield, appearance of edible part, and the absence of disease. So in seeds, tag the selected plants. Allow one or two fruit to mature fully. Harvest selected fruit separately and extract seeds and dry properly. For the dry seeds, you should allow pods of beans or silix of pechai to dry. Harvest pods or silix before they start to shatter. Seeds lose moisture due to wind and sun. So thresh manually the seeds from dried pods or silix by rubbing and splitting with hands or by heating with a stick. Then remove trash by any convenient means and remove disease and wrinkled seeds and dirt by hand. So during rainy season, immediately harvest and air dry mature pads or silic. You can do it under the shade, under the sun, by hanging wet pads or the silic sprays in the net bags above the stove. So in splitting with mature pads to get the seeds, exercise great care to minimize bruising of seeds. However, for the wheat seeds with mucilaginous layer, so you can do it harvesting fully ripe fruits, slice fruits in squeeze seeds and pop in plastic container, alternately crush fruits in plastic container, then ferment seeds, after that stir mixture 3 to 4 times daily, and so on and so forth. So after drying, store seeds properly. So however, for the wheat seeds, seeds without mucilaginous layer, you can do the following procedure. So example of the wheat seeds without mucilaginous layer is the pepper. However, for the wheat seeds with mucilaginous layer, example of it is tomato. For the asexually propagated planting materials, you should select best plants from garden plants based on the habit, yield, and the absence of disease. Tag the selected plants and obtain planting materials when needed. Cuttings, sexually propagated planting materials, some forms, bulbs, and tubers. Sexually propagated planting materials are all planting materials except seeds. Aside from seeds. So for the storing of seeds, here are the procedures and the conditions. For the storing of bulbs and gloves, here are the procedures and the suggested guide. For field storage, this method may be used for cuttings, rhizomes, and corms. So leave plants in the fields until needed and alternately renew planting of such materials. You can also store your planting materials in a diffuse light storage and in dark storage method. So that's it. 
and for addition here are the scientific names of different vegetables and crops that you can plant in your home garden so for example the cassava its scientific name is manihot escolenta trans is the author or the discovery of this you know, of the scientific name for the carrot we have docos carota and many more potato solanum tuberosum we have the soybean and glycine max yes and here are our references for the part one and the part two of our with of, of, of our learning video about vegetable gardening so the main source of our reference is here the reference of our discussions and the rest references are for the image and for the photos so for the black and white photos this was access this were access in these references and that's for now and that's for now oh it's running and there is a critical error that's for now and in vegetable gardening hope you get a lot of information and because of this learning video you are now technically ready to have your home based vegetable gardening so thank you guys for watching this video and see you again to the other learning videos in my channel thank you